ladies and gentlemen, tonight the subject, the day when money will have no use. As you pulled up at the pump station, you're now seeing that something is changing. Presently, we are paying five dollars and seventeen cents per gallon for petrol or fuel. We have not yet seen the summer months as yet. So it means that we are looking primarily at about six dollars and fifty cents per gallon for gas in Nassau. What is this still telling us? This is telling us that things are not getting better, but getting worse. The medical bill is going up even more. Every time you try to fill a prescription, the price or the cost is more than what you had at the last filling. This says that something is not right. The day will come when money will have no use. Because we're going to need more money to get more things done. And the printing of money will get more and more until there are some places you go right now. They don't have dollar bills. A matter of fact, it has been said in the question is asked in the U.S. of A. That is it time for us to get rid of the dollar bill? Because signs are showing that the world's economy is changing. And because it is changing, we have to change with the times. The Bible tells us that things are going to change because God has already made some made the adjustments because of sin. Yes, sir. Every day we wake up, we are seeing signs of sin around us. Amen. Turn with me in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 16. Revelation chapter 16. And verse 1. The Bible says, and I heard a great what? Voice out of the what? The temple saying to the seven angel, go your ways and what? Pull up the fires of the what? Wrath of God where? On Jupiter? On Mars? On where? The earth. Someone asked the question. Yesterday I listened to a station out of South Florida and there was a, a pastor who made a statement to the nation. He said, how can we explain to the people of Japan that God is love? That was a question. What you were saying actually is that he wants to apologize for God. What he was saying is that in a crisis like this, God is responsible for the tsunami and earthquake. But here I've discovered that he is not reading his Bible. Because the signs of the times around us, God is not responsible. It is sin that has caused calamity upon the face of the earth. God is a loving God. God is a God of forgiveness. God is a God who loves every human being. God is the one He doesn't want to destroy anybody. He loves us with an everlasting love. But what has happened now is that sin 
angel came, and verse 2 says, and the first went and put his what? Fire upon where? The earth and the affair of what? One summoned what? Grievous sword upon them which had what? The bark of the beast, and upon them which what? Worship his image. You must have read it in the scriptures about the seven last plagues. I want to let you know tonight the plagues have not yet started. The plagues have not yet started. You ask the question tonight, preacher, can you explain what took place in Japan? Can you explain? I want to share something with you. Ladies and gentlemen, since January the 12th, 2010, I have discovered something that's really strange. From the 12th of January last year to tonight, which is the 15th of March, it's approximately what? One year and about two months. Listen now, I want to share something with you just to let you know. On the 12th of January 2010, an earthquake hit Haiti at 7.0. In China on April 14, 2010, an earthquake hit China at 7.1. On May 30th, last year, 2010, an earthquake hit Indonesia. At 7.6. On February 11, a few, just a few weeks ago, in Chile, an earthquake hit Chile at 7.0. Then on the 22nd of February, just the other, a few weeks ago, an earthquake hit New Zealand at 7.5. And just a few days ago, an earthquake hit Japan at 8.9. Ladies and gentlemen, let me help you to get the picture. In a space of one year and two months, six devastating earthquakes have hit sections of this earth. What is this saying to us? And I want to let you know, this is not the seven last place. What did Jesus say? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, let's get over here quickly. Matthew the 24th chapter, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, in the verse 6 says, Jesus says, and he shall hear of what? Waters and what? Rumors of war, see that he need not what? For all of these things, what? Must, what? Come to pass, but the end is not yet. For all, what? Nation shall, what? And what? Against, and there shall be, what? And, and what? Earthquake and where? And God says, all of these are, what? The beginning of, what? Sorrows. Sorrows. The seven last plagues, they have not yet been poured out upon the face of the earth. It's only the, 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 the earthquakes. Jesus, when he spoke, he said, listen, my children living in the last days, I don't want you to be ignorant about the signs around the world because there will be many false Christs. I want you to take it from me when you see these things that you should look up for your redemption. What? Try it now. All these are quotes. Not one of them have shaken the earth under seven. When I did the investigation, not one of them went under seven. In one year and two months. What are things are going to be for the rest of this year and next year this time? What's going to happen? Where will you be? What's going to happen? The frequency of these earthquakes, they are telling us, and I'm glad Jesus announced 
seen to us already that when you see earthquakes in diverse places, it's the speaking of sorrows. Sorrows. Everywhere you turn, just a few days ago, a man was interviewed in Japan, a fisherman. Was aged about 70. He said he heard the signs. He heard the sign read rather that, that he should go to higher ground. And while he was running, he saw the waves coming. But luckily he reached there was a there was a fine story building, and he was just in time to get up there. And he saw when the waters came in. And when the waters came in, he realized now that the houses were pushed over, going towards the one that he was standing in. And while he was there, he said, the water came up to his knee. And while he was there, he saw a baby floating in the water. It was the water took the baby from the mother's arms. And he said he, he attempted to save the child. But when he remembered the danger, he had to pull back. He heard the scream of the little infant as the water pulled the child to the sea. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know exactly what's on your mind, but what gets me excited is that Jesus told me that these things would happen, and I trust Jesus with my future. Because he says, I am the resurrection and the life, though you are dead, yet shall you live. So you better get ready to die at any time. The child of God who has surrendered his life to Jesus is not afraid of death. Not afraid of death. A good friend of mine was traveling on a plane to Colombia. After they reached a certain section, he was traveling a pastor and himself. would not call the name. While they were flying, turbulence were sitting beside the pastor. And somehow the pastor, he was afraid. And so my friend looked at him and said, let me tell you, if this is it, tell Jesus, if you're ready, I am ready. Because my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. I dare to trust the sweetest friend, but only lean on Jesus' name. Because Christ will, Christ will cause you to be resurrected from the dead. But all these are the beginning of sorrows. And the angel poured out his fire, the first one, upon those who worship the beast, verse 2 of Revelation 16. And sure came upon human beings. Sores are over. When you call them CNN, it's going to flash it that there are sores upon the people. But notice the sores will be upon those who worship the beast. So if you're around and somehow sores are on you, something is wrong. Hello, somebody. Something went wrong. Your worship was not, not, not centered on Jesus. When, when we, you pretended as if you're a real Christian, but the plagues are going to show whether or not your allegiance was for Jesus or towards man. You see, it's not the church you attend. It's the Jesus you worship because he, he says, only those who keep my commandments, they are the ones who are going to be in the eternal kingdom. So after the sores, you go down to PMH. Some doctors and nurses have sores on them. You, read, you remember about the SARS epidemic a few years ago in which they had to screen persons at the airport. It's going to be just like that. I want to let you know that's just a dress rehearsal. It's a dress rehearsal. It's a sign to tell us but I have good news for the Christian because you have given your heart to Jesus none of those sores will be on your body even in your house if your husband did not serve the Lord sores will be on him if your wife didn't serve the Lord sores will be on her if your children did not serve the Lord sores will be on them because God knows he mocks his people and he knows those who worship from their hearts they have their commitments to Jesus Christ. Then it says in verse 3, and the 
second angel poured out his fire upon what? The sea. And it became as the blood of a what? And every living what? So what? You know this is the end now. This is the end. No grouper. No snapper. No bone fishing. Everything is dead in the sea. That's the time CNN, Fox News is going to flash it around to say something. There's a phenomenon that's taking place everywhere you turn in the Bahamas, right around the world. All the creatures are dead in the sea and the sea has turned into blood. I'm going to ask the question, what's going on? That's why Jesus says pestilence and famine. This is a time when the ship, and you know we have to depend upon the cargo coming in to supply. But when the ship boats get in the water, and when the engines are on, when the bloody water gets in the engine, it jam the engine. This is what happened the other day in, in, I think it's in India, where you had the volcano. Planes could not fly. I'm telling you people, it's a dress rehearsal. God is warning us that these are the beginning of sorrows. Tonight there is somebody here. This is the last sermon you're going to hear. This is your final message because you will never hear this again. Because this is your destiny is decided on the descent tonight. And the third angel, verse 4 said, third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers. The fountains of water and they became blood. The sea turned into blood. Now the rivers turned into blood. And then, and I heard the angel of the waters, verse 5, say, Thou art what? Righteous, O Lord, who, which art, and was, and shall be, because thou hast judged us. For verse 6 says, for they have what? Shed the blood of saints and and thou hast what? Given them what? Blood to change. For they are what? And I heard another out of the outer say, Even so, Lord, God, what? Almighty, true and what? Righteous are thy what? Judgment. Everything is going down. Doesn't matter when you try to get the plane to fly. To Miami to get food. But when they go to the pump station, they realize it's blood coming from the pump station. Money will have no use anymore. As you look around, you can see for yourself, God is doing a dress rehearsal with us now. Indicating to us, get ready for the main event. But God's people will know when these things happen, look up for our redemption. What? Try it now. And only those that God has marked, only those persons will escape. I want to let you know when those turn on the pipe, blood will be coming out of them. You go down to Chelsea, Aquapure, blood down there. Because a plague of God is upon the earth. When you go to have a drink of water, then you realize blood is there. But I have good news to tell you tonight. Those who made their commitment with Jesus, when you get your glass of water, it will be fresh water. You are drinking from the fountain of living water because God knows His people. That's a time when you will get sick and because you have faith in God, healing will come. But in your household, they get sick and can't get well. But God will mark His people. Tonight it is your desire. Say, God, I didn't know it was so serious. God wants to mark his people. Personally. Salvation is a personal decision. It's not about my husband or my wife, my boyfriend, our girlfriend. It's a personal decision with Jesus. And when verse 8 says on the fourth, angel poured out his fire. On the sun. And power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. No water and thirsty. And no fire. And men were scorched. Verse 9 says, with great what? Heat and what? Blaspheme the name of God. Which what? Have power over the 
these plagues. And they what? Repented not to give him what? Glory. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I want to let you know tonight that God has already done this. This has already been demonstrated. The Bible, the, the history has revealed on May 19, 1780. 1780. In the U.S. of A, the sun came up that morning and was shining brightly. And suddenly at midday, it became dark. It came so dark that farmers went and placed their cattle on the inside of the barn. And then the same on May 19, 1780, go look it up, it is right there. It is said at that time that the moon came out that night and it looked like blood. That same night. Everything has been done. God is doing a just rehearsal with all of us on planet Earth. Everything God is saying to us that these things are the beginning of sorrows. If a tsunami can separate a baby from its mother. Tonight we are here. We don't even know what's going on beneath our feet right now. We don't even know tomorrow morning when we kiss our loved ones goodbye. We don't know if there's going to be a tsunami way that's going to separate you from your family. You don't know if a earthquake is going to shake the building down and pick you up like that and you stand here and suffer. Nobody knows. That's why everybody ought to let it keep you living. Don't put off Jesus. This is a time to accept Jesus. Don't put him off for a convenient season. Because you don't know exactly when you will breathe your last breath. When this angel poured out his fire. In verse 10, said the fifth angel poured out his fire upon the seat of the beast. And his kingdom was what? Full of darkness. And they what? God the tongues for pain and what blaspheme the God of heaven because of the what? And the sores and what? Meant it not. Let me tell you now, the seat of the beast yes, is the seat where assisted and tried to change God's holy Sabbath. And there is a plague, the first plague, you remember? Revelation 16, verse 1, verse 2 says, The first plague, it was poured upon those who have the mark of the beast. What is the mark of the beast, preacher? The mark of the beast is, it is the allegiance that people give to the Vatican, the Pope of Rome, because on, in 321 AD, Pope Constantine sought and he told people that God's holy Sabbath is not worthy to have worship on. Yes, sir. Right. Today you ask the question, preacher, so what's going to happen to me? Your decision to follow the teachings of Jesus is very important. Because God is not going to save us on proxy. Because I was a good Christian. Because I gave money. Because I fed the hunger. Because I gave money to the poor. God's salvation is not on those things. Salvation is in what Jesus says. Salvation is in Christ. Because we don't can't, we can't do anything to be saved unless we surrender totally to Jesus Christ. So there's a play coming from the seat of the beast. So the Vatican to be turned into darkness. They will blaspheme God. The Bible tells us, ladies and gentlemen, that this is not the first time that this is going on. You see, God wanted to deliver his people out of Egypt. And God did a dress rehearsal. Yes, yes, Exodus chapter 7. Go there quickly with me. Exodus chapter 7. Where the waters turned into blood. Let's check it out. What happened? Exodus chapter 12. It has happened already. Yes, sir. Exodus chapter 12 and verse 21. It says, Exodus chapter 7. Chapter, I'm coming, I'm coming. 721. Yes. 721 says, And the fish that was in the River what? 
And the river what? Stank. And the could not what? Of the water. Or the and there was what? Throughout what? All the land of Egypt. When God wanted to get his people out of Egypt, God had to allow ten plagues upon Egypt. And then the children of Israel, they were set free. But this time he says, he's going to give this last world seven. Praise God, he has reduced it from ten to seven. But I must let you know what is seven. Because, because it's going to be the final showdown. The number seven is perfect showdown. When God locks it and when he releases the angels with the plagues, that's going to be it for planet earth. And the plan of redemption. Tonight you can escape this. You can say, Jesus, I want to walk with you. I know that the wrath will come upon the face of the earth. And I want my life to be in the hand of Almighty God. And then the sixth angel, verse 12 says, Revelation 16 and verse 12. The sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river what? And the waters thereof was what? That the way of the kings of the east might be what? And I saw three unclean what? Like frogs come out of the mouth of the, and out of the mouth of the, and out of the mouth of the what? For verse 14 says, For they are what? The spirits of working what? Which go forth unto what? The kings, and uh, to gather them to the battle of that great day Almighty. Ladies and gentlemen, I need to share this with you now. Jesus says, Just before he comes, false prophets shall arise working miracles you see I want to let you know something tonight that you have heard a lot of big time preachers all around but when they preach they don't tell you about the judgment that's coming because they say sow a seed reap a harvest they will tell you to get more of the word you give me a thousand five hundred and God is going to bless you with twenty thousand. Some of them are glorified bank managers. They know how to multiply money. But I want to let you know that this world is going to be destroyed. It has to be destroyed. But God says I will take care of my people. I will take care of my people. He says your bread and water shall be sure. That's why it is said now, these unclean spirits like frogs, yes, working miracles. Yes, you heard some of them say, put your hand on your television set. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, some of them said, we will post you a special piece of cloth. Yes, some of them said, we will post you a special postcard. Yes, some of them said, open the Bible to a page and place it under your pillow. Some of them say that there is a certain dress you should wear. There are some of them say you have to dress a certain way. Watch those lying preachers. Because they are leading the people astray. Telling them all kinds of things that are contrary to the will of Almighty God. Because these days call for us to give our allegiance to Jesus. And not to man. Because man is going around as if he knows just about everything that should happen. But God wants us to understand that his judgment is sure. And he has already arranged for these things to take place. And while the angels are now pouring out the plagues upon the earth. What's going to happen to the Bahamas? Everything that is written in the Bible is true. Everything that's written in the Bible is true. God is doing a dress rehearsal right now. He has allowed these things to show us that listen, these are the times. And the verse 15 says of Revelation 16, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that what? Watch it and keep it is what? 
garments lest he what? Walk naked and they see is what? Shame. And he gathered them together in a place called in the Hebrew tongue, I'm a what? I'm a getting. I must pause right now. There are many persons out there talking about I'm a getting. And there's going to be a showdown. But I need to share with you what the scriptures talk when it talks about Armageddon. Armageddon, the word Armageddon means a gathering of religious leaders around the world just like the United Nations and they want to set a standard of religious rights upon the earth. Armageddon. And at this time, at this time somebody is going to assume the pastoral role for the world and you know who that is. That's the beast. He's going to set the stage for when people are to worship and we are, they are not to worship. But at this time, I want you to know that God will protect his people. God will look out for his people because they have been marked in their foreheads. The, the angel from the east will mark God's people. Amen. Tonight, if you have not yet been marked, you need to get the mark before you go to your grave. You don't know when you're going to die. But God wants to mark you before you go down. He wants to separate you and for you to be in the first resurrection. I want to let you know tonight, this life is a sad life. It's a sad life. Miserable life. But God has promised a sweet life without sin. I want to live that life. I am, I want to meet, live that life and I want Jesus to come. This sinful world. Oh, many of us would suffer in our beds with diseases rocking our bodies. Some of us now have been diagnosed with some terminal illnesses. We don't even want our neighbors to know. We don't even want anybody to know. But I have good news. That Jesus will give you a new body. And that body will live and will not die. Not only that, we're going to live longer than what we are living now. When you shall read a thousand years, you just have agility. You can run all over the place because it's going to be a new body. so glad. God is going to change the order of things. Earthquakes all around. The sea turning into blood. The river turning into blood. Sores are over. I thank God he's coming back again. He's coming back again to set his people free. You ask the question, preacher, when is Jesus coming? All I got to tell you tonight, he's coming He's coming soon, I know. How soon is soon? He is making up the jewels in glory. Will I see him before he comes? Maybe. But if in case you die, he says, listen child, I'm going to fix things for you. He says that those who die in the Lord, they will come up in the first resurrection. And those who are alive, they have to wait on you. Until those who die come up first. I don't know when last you have traveled first class. There is something about first class. Some time ago I was traveling and somehow they made a mistake by putting me first class. So what I did, I sat in the chair and I just reclined the chair. I said, Lord, this might be the first and last time. So I tell them I need, I need my wet towel. That just was warm to, to wipe my head. I told them I need water to drink. And so I had a good time. They served me first. They took care of me. They came and said, sir, are you fine? Are you okay? Because we want you to fly back with us. I said, all right. I don't know if I'm going to fly back with you. But I'm making sure of this first class treatment. I'm glad to let you know. Jesus says, those who die in the Lord, they're going to travel first class to glory. Because he's going to resurrect his people. And he's going to dress up.
said, Jesus, I didn't know it was so sweet. First class, going to heaven. What a joy it is when our lives are hidden in Jesus. When our lives are hidden in Jesus, it tells us that he's going to take care of us. First class, going to heaven. When they bury you in that suit, Jesus is going to change you. When they place you in the casket, he's going to burst it open. That's my child. When they place a pair of glasses on your face, but when you shall get up, your vision is going to be 2020. You're going to see the galaxies. You're going to see the stars. Hallelujah. Because I said, because we have sinned, we cannot see some of the stars up there. But I want to let you know, we're going to go stargazing, traveling first class. We have never been there before, but the angel shall escort us to glory. And when you shall look back, you'll see the earth in flames like Japan. And then you're going to say, this is our God. We are long waiting for him. And our salvation is anchored in Jesus Christ. What a day. That's going to be when my Jesus I shall see. He's going to redeem us from this earth. All the troubles of earth will be over. All the meetings that will wind us will be over. No more breaking news on CNN or Fox News. It will be a new kind of life in Jesus Christ. We don't need to go to school anymore. No uniform. No teachers. Nothing like that. Because Jesus will be the teacher. He will teach us of galaxies that we have never seen before. I read somewhere that there are those unfallen worlds. We're going to meet them for the very first time. Because we have sinned, we have been separated from them. But on that day, it's going to be a great reunion. It is your desire tonight, say Jesus. I want my life to be in Jesus. It is your desire you have not yet given your heart to Jesus. We say, Lord, I must get ready. Would you raise your hand tonight? You have not yet given your heart to Jesus. And you want to get ready for Jesus to come. Raise that hand to heaven and say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It is getting sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. As you raise your hand, I'm going to invite us to stand. Say, Lord, I want to be ready. The planes are going to come. But God's people are going to be rescued. Hallelujah. No more pain. No more sickness. No more crying. No more divorce. Hallelujah. No more sweetheart life. Hallelujah. No more police going around with sirens. No more ambulance. It will be a place where we're never brought home. No more sickness. No more death. No more pain. No more sorrow. It's a place where we never go home. Tonight is your desire. It's Jesus. Jesus. I want to begin my walk with you. It is your desire tonight. I invite you to come. Just walk from where you are. And walk to this altar. Say Jesus. I must begin my walk with you. Leave from where you are. And come. 